Hello friends. So today we're going to discuss a very interesting problem from lead code problem name sub array sum divisible by k. So this question uses a very interesting topic uh, or a logic you can say. So we're going to discuss that logic and lot of like lot of the students actually face problem understanding this topic. So the question statement is very simple. It states that you are given an array a of integers return the number of contiguous non empty like sub like sub array so you have to turn out contiguous sub arrays as you can see like this and like this such that the the sum of those sub arrays should be divisible by k so that's the whole question now as you can see to find out sub array problems there can be a number of ways but the simple techniques can be using two pointers sliding the technique but there is also one more technique in which you can store the last occurrence of a possible combination so i'll tell you how or like how we can solve this so we're gonna take this example only to make this even more clear so k is equal to 5 and we're gonna paste this example here perfect so now now as you can see k is equal to 5 what does this mean it means that i have to find out sub areas in which the total number of sum of all the elements is equal or uh, like this divisible by 5 there's also a problem or different variation of this problem which can be that you have to find out the number of sub arrays whose sum is equal to k okay so that's the problem you can also solve that problem using this technique so how you can solve this problem here is so what you can do here is let's see that i'll move from left to right let's just start like just we are doing this in two pointer let's say uh, we move from left to right there is one sub array four now, now if I find one sub array equal to 4, then whether this is divisible by 5, by five as, as you can see. see. No, no I, I like this sub array cannot, cannot divisible by 5, only 4, because 4 is 4, like it is not a factor of 5. So, okay, okay. we'll move for the right. And, and then there is another, another factor, factor, like sub array, which is 4 and 5. Now, this as a whole cannot be divisible by 5, but this part, only this. 5 can be divisible by, like, 5, as you can see. Now, now how you can, can check, check that? that see my, my main task is we can move from left to right and actually we cannot like we can also find out the sum at each point but what we can see here is there is one more interesting thing what we can see uh, i'll draw some other case let's assume that k is equal to zero this is a very standard problem in which you have to find out the number of sub arrays whose sum is equal to zero so, so what you can, can see here is if let's assume that i have one 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 minus one minus one minus one okay the total sum till now if i move from left to right is equal to three as soon as i also add these three elements then the total sum become equal to zero and let's assume that initially without processing any of the sub arrays my initial sum is again zero let's assume i have a sum variable which is equal to zero in initial and then what you can see here is as I move from left to right initially my sum is equal to 0 and when I process the whole sub array my again sum turns out to be 0 so when my sum is 0 and my sum again turns out to be 0 what does this mean? that I have like the total sum till now is null because I have not incurred like in the initial it is also 0 and till this point it again becomes 0 so the numbers in between these two points are Ill, irrelevant like the total sum of them will be 0 because it is not affecting this part as you can see my total sum starting is 0 at this point is again 0 so the number in between these two points are irrelevant the sum their sum in between is 0 I hope you get my point so that's the whole logic what you can do so if the total sum is equal to 0 what you can see here is that if I find out the same number again if I find out another 0 again so as you can see uh, if I find out another 0 again then the total 0 will become like the total sum will become 0 but whether this is always possible what what I mean by this is like there can also be a sub array like this which is the total sum is equal to 0 there can also be a sub array like this but we are not counting out those sub arrays how we count out those sub arrays so let's look a deep inside this problem when I move from left to right, my total sum till now is, as you can see, it is uh, it is initially 0, then it become 1, then it become 2, then it become 3, then it again drop down by 1, it is just find out the prefix sum, so it will become 2. Then I will do a minus 1 again, so it will become equal to 1, then again do a minus 1, it will become 0. 
now what, what you can, can see here is this number is repeating again, again. So, so as, as you can see same, same logic you can implement that, that my sum initially is zero then my sum again turn out to be zero what, what does this mean that it that, that all the numbers in between are nullified like, like they, they are not contributing to any sum, sum. That's, that's why the sum is zero also as you can see that initially my sum is zero let's assume that my sum is two and again i encountered my sum equal to two what does this mean that all the numbers between this range are also not contributing to my answer i hope you get my point so whenever i find the same number in the prefix sum it, it tells, tells me that, that all the numbers, numbers in between are not contributing anyway. They are not contributing because that I have encountered the same sum. So if I encountered the same sum, the numbers between these two positions are null. They are not contributing. So this same logic of seeing the same number twice, thrice and so on. So if as you can see, if I again find out the same number two here, what does this mean? That this sub array, all the numbers between these two parts, this two and this two, is not contributing and also between these two and this two not contributing and also between these two and these two are not contributing so as you can see if there are three occurrence of twos so i just have to find out three c2 so i have to like how many sub arrays can be there as you can see if there are three elements so i have to choose three points among these two points which will be total number of sub arrays i can choose so as you can see it is uh, equal to three so now or actually equal to so there are three numbers three c2 three into 2 divided by 2 so it is equal to 3 total number of arrays as you can see is equal to 3 so that's what we can do in this question also so what you can easily do here is we have to find out the total number is equal to 5 now we have to extend the same logic here also if now i want that in the in this question the total sum is equal to 0 if i want to find out the total sum is equal to 5 what we can do uh, or not actually 5 so we have to find out that the total sum should be divisible by 5 okay so, so what, what you can, can do instead of storing out the sums because this sum may not be seen again we can store their sum modulus k that's the main logic we can do this in problem because as you can see if my initial sum is 5 then i will take this 5 add this to this total sum so total sum till this is 4 then i will not directly add 5 to this I will add 5 and do a modulo this with 5 such that my total sum will not exceed 5. So as you can see when I will add this what will I happen the total sum will become 9 and when I do 9 modulo 5 it will become 4. So I am actually finding out the prefix sums so for all the prefix sums I will do a mod 5 value. So because mod 5 will actually tell me that whether what is the modulus left if this is a multiple of 5 what is the modulus left it will turn out to be 4 and as you can see the same logic will apply here we have seen the two numbers again so what does this mean that all the numbers between two num these two positions because this number has occurred again both the numbers like one number between two these two positions will be contributed to the factor of 5 which means that if i take only that number this total sum prefix sum will again happen so this means that this number which is adding now is actually not contributing or actually a factor of 5. So if I go here again also, my prefix sum till now is again 9. So 9 modulus 5 is equal to 4 again. Now my prefix sum till now is 9. The prefix sum till now becomes 7. Then minus 6, minus 3, so it will become equal to uh, 4. And then it will become equal to 5. So, so I will do all these numbers modulus 5. five. So, so modulus 5 of this value is equal to 2. Modulus 5 of this value is equal to 4. Modulus 5 of this value is equal to 0. And initially there is no sum, so there is also 0 here. So I also initialize the total sum is equal to 0. So now I will count the total number of occurrence of every individual point, as you can see what I have done here. So I can see that 4 occurs 4 times. So 4 is 2. Which means, means that I can take this sub array. So, so as you can see, if I take, take only this sub array, then 5 is divisible by this. This sub array. So, so I can take this. If I can take, so as you can see, 4 is again happening here. So I can take this sub array, as you can see. This sub array. As you can see, the total sum is equal to is equal to 0. Because this is happening. I can, I can, so that's how I can take all the sub arrays. So that we have to just count out the number of 4s. Or actually count out the occurrence of every number. And, and then, then force it to answer. answer. Also, also what, what you can, can do, instead of doing this force to, there is also one more technique. What, what you can, can do here is, because what, what you are finding out that, 
when, when this four again happen out, out which means that i am actually making the sub arrays this is one point of the sub array and i can make this sub array so like as you can assume that when whenever the same number occurs we can do a sub array like this all the sub arrays like this same as you can see if there are two 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 here and i found out that one more two again so this is one possible sub array then if i found out another two here so these are the possible sub arrays so how many sub arrays are there ending at this position is equal to number of points before this so what what i mean by this is let's assume there are four points when i come to this point when i see that again four happens so i will just add one to it number of points before this like number of four occurring before this point which is equal to one when i come to this point number of four occurred to this till this point is two number of four occur before this point is equal to three so this is actually when you add all this number it's actually equivalent to this only four to two so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna just take out all those sub arrays because what i've told you is all the sub arrays between these two points is actually the multiple of five or the number multiple of k only so that's the whole logic for this problem so we'll move on to the code part now so as you can see in this code part okay it's loading yeah so, so in the, the code, code part, part as you can, can see um uh, this, this is a map for sorting out the like, like occurrence of every number or every, every possible prefix what, what i've told you so after count out the number of how many times every prefix occurs so that's the thing this is the total sum which will store the prefix sum initialized a of 0 because i have told you that 0 the frequency of 0 is initialized with 1 because the total sum is initially 0 so the occurrence of 0 has 1 is equal to 1 this actually store how many times every number occurred then total number of subarrays is equal to 0 then we move from left to right and we like total sum will be having the addition of ei and the total sum till now and we we'll do a mod this with k so this is the total function of mod function and the add function we are actually doing a modulus of that number with m and also adding this in using this function so this function i have already made a video on like you can search my channel so you will understand how to do modulus uh, like modular application of arithmetic so i have already made a video so you and there i will explain how this function works and then i'm actually adding those two values and like storing the answer in total sum then i am actually finding out how much time this total sum has occurred before so how we can i check we can just 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 put this total sum value in the map which is a dot total sum and add all the occurrence of this number in total total number of sum and after adding all those numbers i will update this total sum value in the map plus one because see for this four what will i do i will check how many total number of fours are there before this so i will find out that there are two fours So then after, after like final total, total number seven days will be two i will add this to the like total number of fours i have seen till now so that whenever i see another four i know that there are three fours like before this that's what i have done i will add this in the total sum and then i will set a total number of seven days so that's a an immediate type of problem but it's a very important concept this concept like this concept can be used in multiple problems and also code forces latest problem has used this technique also so i hope you get my point and also the problem statement and the code itself if you still have any doubt please mention now thank you for watching this video ask me next one keep coding bye